Now at 11, Oregon bans flavored vapes. We're going to tell you when the ban goes into effect and the big penalties that retailers could pay if they ignore it. An unbelievable, unplanned show of support. Days after the daughter of Mercy Corps' co-founder shared her heartbreaking story of abuse, employees there make it clear they have her back. Plus, a major road in and out of Portland closes for the weekend so crews can install a much-needed pedestrian bridge connecting a popular trail in Forest Park. And before Friday night flies, how some ex-NFL players are helping kids get in the game safely. We do not want to lose the kid to another sport when he actually loves the sport of football because of concussions. Your news starts now. First tonight, while parts of California are blacked out, others are lit up by flames. Wildfires have already killed two people in Southern California and tens of thousands are under evacuation orders as whipping winds keep the fires moving. Now these are the exact conditions that California power companies feared while they were taking unprecedented actions to shut off electricity to nearly two million homes and businesses. It's pretty crazy how it just happened so fast like it just all of a sudden just like uh, came up into flames. There are nearly a dozen fires burning right now across California. The largest is in northern Los Angeles, and they are very difficult to fight, primarily because of the terrain that they're dealing with. But the biggest concern right now are the embers and them traveling in the wind. If they go downwind, they can spark new fires, which is why uh, officials are being cautious about letting people return to their homes. They say it could take up to a week at this point to get these wildfires under control. Back at home, two Forest Grove firefighters were hurt while battling a garage fire today. They knocked out the flames pretty quickly and stopped the fire from spreading to the house. But while they were searching for hot spots, a shelving unit collapsed and hit two of the firefighters, knocking one of them to the ground. Other firefighters helped get the debris off him and pulled him out safely. Both were taken to the hospital and thankfully only have some minor sprains. It happened again. Another semi truck flipped off of Old Cornelius Pass Road. They have signs there. They're posted warning big trucks not to take this route because of all the tight turns, but drivers keep ignoring them and they keep tra crashing. No injuries this time, just lots of spilled tea, as you can see there. And the road had to be closed overnight so crews can clean it up. This driver was cited for careless driving. It took six tow trucks to pull the semi truck out of the embankment. Now to a traffic alert in northwest Portland, and it will last all weekend. A stretch of West Burnside will be closed until Monday, so crews can wrap up work on a multi-million dollar pedestrian bridge. KGW's Mike Benner has the details about this much-needed improvement. We're on West Burnside, and these roadblocks will be going up at Hermosa on the east side and Barnes on the west side, and they'll remain in place until right before the morning commute Monday. This will give workers the space they need to put into place the final piece of this much anticipated pedestrian bridge. In just a matter of days, this hunk of steel will span the width of West Burnside, connecting portions of the popular Wildwood Trail. The interesting thing about this bridge is it's uh, really uh, Portland's first crowd-funded bridge. Uh, over 900 individual contributions actually funded uh, almost two-thirds of it. You can count Jill Ward among the hundreds of donors. She lives in the neighborhood and walks the Wildwood Trail four to five times a week. We've all been just fearing that somebody's going to get hit. Why? Because up until now, trail users would have to walk across West Burnside. The new pedestrian bridge will make that trip a lot safer. It's just great. We really need that. As Portland is getting busier and there are more and more people on the trails, we really need a way for people to get across Burnside safely. Trail runners will tell you they're excited for the continuity the Barbara Walker Crossing will bring. And that's pretty exciting if you're doing really long distance running uh, because it is like, I think it's like 30 miles start to finish or somewhere around there. Um, but yeah, right now it's like cut off at mile three. Over the coming weekend, the bridge will be dropped into place with the use of a crane the culmination of a years-long $3.2 million project. I think, you know, in, in many ways, uh, uh, drivers are going to appreciate it as much as the trail users because, uh, uh, one, they won't have to be dodging pedestrians anymore and be, you know, risking, you know, bumper and injury. Uh, and then also they get to drive under a new gateway to the city. Randy Gregg of the Portland Parks Foundation is asking that people not come out here to watch the work this weekend. While it will be impressive, he says there's just no room for onlookers. He says you can drive under the bridge come Monday, 
and you can walk across it during the official reveal party in a couple of weeks. Reporting in Northwest Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Boy, looking forward to that. Another closure to be aware of on Burnside this weekend. The bridge has now closed for the whole weekend. It will stay closed until Monday morning at 5 a.m. Crews are making repairs to the deck joints. As of next Tuesday, the sale of flavored vaping products will be illegal throughout Oregon. The statewide ban will then last through April 11th. The OLCC approved this ban today, and they said that staff immediately is going to start going out and warning retailers that they need to pull these flavored products from their shelves. It will also be illegal, keep in mind, to buy them online, even from out of state. Retailers who violate the ban will get a warning at first. If they violate again, though, they could face a $500 fine every day, and licensed marijuana dispensaries could lose their license. The ban is not sitting well, of course, with vape shop owners. They say these flavored products make up a huge portion of their sales. The response from the chairman of the OLCC was essentially tough luck. It's a legal business, it's a vibrant business, but the overriding obligation that the commission has is to the health and uh, welfare of the people of the state of Oregon. It's mind blowing that they're pegging this on youth health or public protection. We have plenty of things out there that are legally able to, that people have access to them legally and will kill more people than vaping. Officials said that this ban on flavored products is mostly to attempt to stop teens from using and to stop new users from vaping. Washington's ban went into effect yesterday. I'm so touched and I'll, I'll never forget this. This will change me. A powerful scene outside the Mercy Corps headquarters today as the daughter of the organization's co-founder hugged and cried with employees. Tanya Culver Humphrey revealed in the Oregonian this week that her father had sexually abused her for years and the organization knew and took no action against him. Dozens of employees spontaneously came to greet her when they heard she was outside today. And as KGW's Pat Doris reports, their overwhelming support was more than she'd ever imagined. The hug seemed nonstop, and they lasted a while outside the world headquarters of Mercy Corps today. Oregon's largest nonprofit is focused on helping people around the world, but the Oregonian newspaper reported the organization failed to help Tanya Culver Humphrey, the daughter of a co-founder who said she was sexually abused by her father for decades. Today, the employees wanted her to know they cared. To receive so much, so much love and belief, I, 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 I don't have very good words. I'm like, I don't, I don't, um, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the employees to speak out about what matters and to try to, try to change things. The outflow of emotion moved many. This is one of the most incredible things I've ever witnessed. It followed yesterday's outburst of anger from inside the building. Employees felt CEO Neil Kenny Geyer was evasive during a live stream town hall meeting over how he and others handled Humphrey's allegations. There was a powerful moment when everybody just spontaneously went up to the fourth floor, the top floor of the building and demanded change. They demanded a resignation and they demanded that there would be accountability. Pat Doris, KGW News. In other news, an Oregon businessman with ties to the impeachment inquiry into President Trump will testify before Congress after all. Gordon Sondland, currently the U.S. ambassador to the EU, was set to testify this week, but the White House blocked him from doing so. He now says he'll testify next Thursday. His text messages show he worked with another ambassador to push Ukrainian officials to make a public promise they'd investigate Joe Biden. Sondland founded the company that owns several Portland hotels. Oregon Congressman Earl Blumenauer has called for a boycott of those hotels until Sondland testifies. Look, don't don't be a criminal. Just don't don't be. But if you are going to be a criminal, I get, don't be a dumb criminal, please. Washington County deputies arrested two men for stealing a car after they locked themselves out of it. Deputies got the call about two men using a crowbar. They were trying to crow their way into this Toyota Corolla. It was in a parking lot of a QFC on Barnes Road. And these two here claimed that, hey, the car belongs to a friend, except it didn't. They'd locked the keys inside and it had been stolen the day before. Omar Velasquez and Kenneth Hayden are now both facing theft charges.
I love this picture. Check this out. A tale of two Nicks. City Commissioner Nick Fish appears to be the first Portlander to nab a selfie with Nick Cage. Commissioner Fish visited the set of Cage's new movie. It's called Pig. It's shooting here in Portland. He quipped in the caption, see if you can identify the two people below. One plays a city commissioner on Channel 30. The other is a big Hollywood star. Hint, they both share the same first name. I like it, man. It's getting me pumped to see Pig.